What's up, divas? 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 What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back. It's Real Talk Diva Time. Real Talk Wednesday. It's Real Talk Wednesday. What's up, y'all? What's up? Okay. What's up? How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's having like a really great day when you're watching this. Okay, girl, what's up? Sitting here chilling. Y'all already know what day it is of the week. It's Wednesday, but while I'm recording this, it's Monday. Okay. Y'all know what I always say every week. Gotta get prepared for y'all. Definitely got to get prepared for y'all because y'all is my family. Okay. I got to make sure that my content is prepared for y'all. Like I don't want to be lacking, slacking or none of that. Okay. What's up everybody. So I hope you all are having like a really great day. Blessed day. Blessed afternoon, evening, whatever time you watching this. I hope y'all all are having like a really blessed day. Okay. I'm, I'm, I am. It's early. Well, it's, it's 10, it's 1031 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I done did my Monday ritual, you know, on the weekends. I don't do nothing. Girl, when I tell y'all I was chilling all weekend. Okay. Girl, I was chilling. All right. Like I love the no doing nothing on the weekends life. Like seriously. But the other day yesterday, I, you know what? Okay. So I kept seeing this thing being advertised on like the commercials when you're watching like Amazon Prime video. Like, you know, when you're watching like live on Amazon Prime, whatever, they have like their own little commercials. I guess you could pay for advertisement or whatever, but not even just that. I, um, sometimes you'll see like advertisements of other video channels. So that way you could, you know, subscribe to them and pay for them. So this one that I already, I don't watch this one particular channel because it's included in the channel that I wanted, but I don't really watch it. It's called uh shutter. I think it's how you say it. Shutter, right? Shutter. It's like a creepy channel, like a horror channel, whatever. So I don't really watch it. But I kept seeing this thing, this this movie being advertised called Late Night with the Devil. And it looks like it's an old movie, like from the 70s. It's just the way they filmed it. You know what I'm saying? It was made in 2023. So I'm like, I'm not watching that shit. I'm not watching it. And they would show the advertisement for it for like a minute. And so I'm like, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that because I don't really like to watch like devilish type of movies. I just, I don't know. I've always been like that. You know what I'm saying? So I really don't like to watch devilish type of movies. I, I think it's because as a kid, okay, so I was scared to death um, as a kid. Like, I don't know. And it sucks because the movie came out on my birthday and year, okay? My father has like little pins that represent the date. Now they didn't get to go to the movies to see it because that was the day I was born. But I seen this movie as a kid and it scared the shit out of me. When I say it scared the shit out of me, the one scene when she was sitting on the bed and the mother opened the door and her head just turned all the way around. Like, I do not like the exorcist. That was the day that movie came out on my birthday or on my actual birth and year. So it, it doesn't even have the fact um, that I don't like it because of my, we, we share that in common, but I just, that movie is so effing scary. To this day, I'm scared of that movie. And it's like the worst and the most scariest movie ever. Not only just that movie, but there's this other movie that my mother had me watching one time. And girl, when I tell you I'm scared of that, now it's, it came out during the same time as The Exorcism. Um, okay, so the movie was called The Entity. It was based in 1982, it was made in 1982, and it's based on a true story, The Entity. So my mother had me watch this movie. Um, she and I watched it when I was pregnant with my first kid. Girl, when I tell you I was so scared, when my mother got up to go to work the next day, I followed her, okay? I wasn't getting paid to do no work, but I was there, okay? So I really don't like movies that like can base, like that really are demonic. I just really don't like demonic movies. And I kept telling myself, I wasn't going to watch this movie that they kept advertising called Late Night with the Devil. So I'm watching TV yesterday and I was, what was I watching? I was watching a trailer for a movie called Angelica or yeah, Angelica about vampires. I love vampire movies, vampire series. I love anything vampire related. So after the trailer went off, the movie just started playing out of nowhere. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I paused the TV so I can see, and I was like, oh, great, it's late night with the devil. Let me watch this since it's during the daytime. It was like about 11 30, 11 o'clock. Everybody was awoke. So, okay, it's not late night. I keep seeing the advertisement for it. It keeps looking goddamn scary. Let me watch it. Girl, when I tell you I hate a fake ass advertisement, like, stop advertising shit that you show that make it look like it's good, but it was trash. When I tell you this movie was trash, I wasted like an hour and 20 minutes of my life that I'm never going to get back. But I was able to sit there 
there and watch the TV. Now, normally I don't do this. Like I, I'm always occupied by something. Like April does not just watch the TV and just be sitting there watching the TV. But I was so proud of myself because I was able to do this. <laughs> okay. Like my mind be running like miles per minute. Like I just cannot sit and just watch TV. Like I, I just can't do it. I have to be doing something. Of course, I did make some really new bracelets. And on Friday, let me tell y'all, Friday, you know, Monday through Friday, I work. Okay. I don't even get on my computer on the weekends anymore. That's how dedicated I am to being a fucking bum on the weekends. But Friday, I said, let me take these pictures of all these bracelets that I made. And remember, I told y'all last week that I loathe taking pictures because I just do. You have to get the right lighting. You got to sometimes not use the flash because the flash will bling it all out. It was like, it took me like, I want to say two and a half hours to take pictures. And I was getting so irritated. So when I looked back at all the footage, now, mind you, I don't even use any of my cameras anymore to take pictures. I have two Canons, one like the one that I'm always recording with, you know what I'm saying? And then I have one that I do sometimes record with. I used to. I could take it out and about. I don't even use that one. I'll just use my phone because the phone is like the best thing. You can edit on there. You can do just loads of shit. So I look at the pictures afterward. And girl, when I tell you I was fucking pissed, I was pissed. Like, I'm going to have to take these all over again. Mind you, I didn't even think about the part where I had to edit them. I swear, to, I tell you what, iPhones be having the best of everything, okay? When I told you these pictures came out so nice after I cropped them and zoomed, girl, listen. So that's what I did on Friday. Even though I really wanted to get off work early, I still stuck around and did that. But, girl, first let me tell y'all thank you for all the birthday love. Birthday love galore. When I tell you a, a girl was so like overwhelmed with love and happiness, I was so overwhelmed with love and happiness. Like straight up. Thank y'all so much. Like straight up on my Instagram, on my YouTube. You guys are just amazing. When I tell you I felt the love, like if y'all was right here with me, I felt it just that much. Okay. Even though I was reading the comments, it just felt so warm, so engaging, so loving, you know what I'm saying? So appreciated. I was grateful and appreciate you guys so much. Like when I read the birthday comments, I just was like, wow, the love, you know what I'm saying? And it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing to feel love. Like straight up for those who don't feel love. No wonder why they so fucking miserable. You know what I'm saying? No wonder why they so fucking miserable, but I feel so much love when I'm talking to you guys, when you guys are talking, engaging back with me. Like I know the love is there. So I want to tell you guys, thank you so much for all the birthday love and interaction. Like y'all is amazing. My birthday Wednesday was a beautiful blessed day. First of all, I woke up so I'm blessed and I was thankful and grateful okay that was number one when I walked down the steps the first thing that I was said to was happy birthday by my granddaughter she only two but she can talk she is a yapper she definitely is a yapper but she is such a smart little yapper and then my grandson you know they told me happy birthday and I was so so like so blessed and I was just so appreciative you know what I'm saying and my day was beautiful like when I tell you my day was beautiful I got up on Wednesday I took my granddaughter to daycare because that's what I do you know what I'm saying I like to do that every morning like I told y'all so that way I could start my day I don't be in the bed like being no bum like I don't sleep late anyway so late late to me sleeping now is waking up by eight o'clock it is something times not even if I get to sleep to like 7 7 30 that's late for me um lately I've been just waking up at five o'clock just like no no alarm just waking up and I just stay up I can't wait go back to sleep so that's when I start my day but lately I've been going to sleep like by 10 30 I'd be knocked the fuck out okay um I don't know if it's the weed or if it's my sleeping medication but girl I'd be so tired I, it might be the phone you know I like to play the word game on my phone so that might be what's making me tired but when I tell y'all, um, I like to play the word game, there'll be some nights, well, there'll be some nights when I play, um, I'll color, and then there'll be some nights when I just don't color, I'll just play the word game. But I always play the word game. Even if I color, I'll, I'll dedicate like an hour to an hour and a half of coloring. And then when I'm done with that, you know, it usually be like 10 30, 10 o'clock when I'm done coloring, I'll, you know, put my stuff away and then I'll get on my phone and I'll play my word shaker. It's called word shaker. I've been playing this shit for years. So I don't know if it's the screen that's making me tired, but after I finish coloring is when I take my sleep medication. Cause girl, I have dozed off in the middle of coloring. Okay. Yeah. That, that it gets like that. So, and I also smoke weed every night. So, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know if it was that, but, but anyway, so I took my granddaughter to school and then I came back when I was leaving, you know, 
when I was already gone, I seen Tati leave off through my phone through the ring doorbell. So she said she has some errands to do. So when she came back and she told me not to come downstairs, she FaceTimed me. She called me and told me not to come downstairs. So when she came in, she um she invited me downstairs, you know, after like a few minutes, she called me down. And when I went down, I had the, the big gold balloons saying 50, which was so cute. And they're still up on my wall, my living room. I had the big 50-year-old balloon. I had the cake. I had uh, flowers. I had gifts. Man, I had such a great fucking day. So my morning, my morning, and I, I'm sorry I have to say it like that, but that's how it started off. So when she invited me down, you know, I had the balloons. All my daughters were downstairs. Um, Nay had took the day off from work because her and Mumsy were going to make the Stallion concert that night. That was my birthday gift from Tati, but we gave it to the girls. So all my daughters was downstairs, including my daughter Pancake, okay? And um, Tinky was at uh, day camp for the day. So like I said, they presented me with gifts. I had this, my favorite cake from um, Nothing Bunt Cakes. I love them. If you have a Nothing Bunt Cake in your area, you definitely have to try them. That cream cheese frosting is to die for. Tati got me that for my birthday. Strawberry and cream cake with the frosting. So I had my cake, I had my balloon, I had, um, I had a gift from Mumsy, which was a new pajama set. You know, I love loungewear. Um, a bag full of sweet cherries, because I eat sweet cherries all summer long, okay? And two drinks, uh, like little shot drinks. Nay had gave me my present too, was my new set of a hoo hoo markers, which were 200 markers, like I need any more. But you know, markers die out. Tati made me baked macaroni and cheese. I made some ribs, barbecue ribs. And um, later on that day, my grandson and my daughter in law came over, my two grandsons, because the other two were away. And um, later on that day, also, um, Tati and Pancake, Pancake presented me with a gift, which was a bag full of shot drinks, okay? Like I had a gift bag full of shot drinks and some weed from the dispensary, okay? I had some weed. So that was, a, I had a great birthday, y'all. I had a really great birthday. I enjoyed my birthday a lot. My grandkids were over, you know what I'm saying? I had a great day. We had dinner. The girls looked so cute when they went to the Meg The Stallion concert, uh, Mumsy and Ane. They look so cute. Uh, I remember it's still a picture. Uh, Mumsy was, this was her first concert. So, you know, she had a really great experience. They ended up on some Instagram, popular Instagram uh, page. I can't remember the name of them. Uh, if I rem I'll put it in, but they was interviewed. I guess it was like a, if you say, Ow. I haven't made the style that says it. Ow. Um, you win something or you get a pair of glasses. So she had a really great time. They had a really great experience at the um, the, the concert. They both look really, really cute. I'm glad they, they enjoyed themselves. And um, yeah, that was like about it for my birthday. I had like a really good birthday. Like seriously, I had a really good birthday. I can't ask for more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I really did. I think like this was like my best birthday ever. I had a really great day. Um, and them ribs and macaroni and cheese was definitely hitting. And so was that cake, okay? Now, yeah, later on, I, I was I was so excited to go lay down later on because I knew it was coloring time. So I got to use my new markers. I got to smoke my weed. You know what I'm saying? She got me like a nice little different selection of weed. I got pre-rolls. I got flour. Girl, I had like a really... I had shots. Girl, I had a great birthday. I had an amazing birthday. So I thank you all for the birthday love. Like seriously, thank you for the birthday love. Also, you guys, we're going to definitely have a sponsor for today's video. You know, it's She Glam. They have amazing makeup. So affordable makeup, a really great collection. So I'm definitely going to share that with you guys. But I wanted to share this one thing with you guys. You know, I, I have videos where I like to go and get like reduced products from one said grocery store, which is Fry's, which is Kroger's. So if you have a Kroger's in your, your, your state or whatever, definitely you want to check their aisle. Um, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but in our in our Kroger's, the aisle is located in the aisle where they sell uh, sandwich bags, okay? So this is like the clearance aisle. They have like a whole big section where it's reduced. And then they also have a freezer of reduced stuff too. And then if you go daily, they'll have like certain things reduced. You just got to come early in the morning. But for these aisles, like this aisle, they have, they'll have all types of things in this particular section of reduced aisle. You know what I'm saying? In the aisle with the sandwich baggies. They'll have like a whole little lane dedicated to reduced stuff. It could be anything. Wine, drinks, like beers that have been separated. Like, you know, you get a case of beer, someone took it out. So they, now you got five, they'll sell them separately for like 80 cents a piece. All kind of things. Lotion, hair care products diapers I don't ever see how diapers can expire but Tati has bought loads and boxes the other day of diapers big boxes of baby diapers you know so loads of those for reduced like half the price off not even sure how this is and maybe the boxing is probably changed but they have loads of different products so Tati she she always seems to hit like the jackpot when she goes I don't ever find 
stuff. I guess I go when it's already picked through. I don't, I don't know. But the other day she went and she came back with one. I was like, oh girl, if you go back later on, get me some. Girl, y'all, y'all know, look at this, Dove. $4.39. So she got me the last two. Now, you know, one of these is $8, $8.9. And it says it on here. It was $7.99, $8. So this is in the reduced aisle. I was so happy. So if you have a program, check their aisles out for like the reduced clearance aisle because they be having some really cool stuff. And I have like this big sign. The only reason why this was reduced is you see the back, it's a little pushed in. That's the only reason. Nothing spilled out. You didn't lose any ounces. So it's like squeezed in. And more or less, if you open the bottle, you get the air out. You have like a Kroger. Check out their aisle. Like I said, it's in like the sandwich baggy aisle for us. But they be having like some really cool reduced stuff. And I'm, look, I'm all about saving money. $4.39? Yes, sir. Okay. Because Dove is not fucking cheap. So today for our sponsors, talk about skincare and stuff and such. Today our sponsors for this video is She Glam. Now y'all know I have done quite a few videos for them. She Glam, they have like some really cute makeup and you want my honest opinion, I'm going to give you my honest opinion and that's what anything, period. So they did send me some of their new foundation and I think it's called, what is it called? It's called Skin Magnet High Coverage Foundation Stick. Now of course it's a foundation stick so it's going to come out creamy and I'm not really sure about you but me preferably I do like liquid foundation. The only time I like to use like a foundation cream stick is for my under eye. But that's only what I would use it for, a cream foundation, like it's under my eye. I just don't feel the need to like use a stick all over my face. How I also don't really care for it too much for my face is because it just seems like it goes on so greasy and doesn't seem to absorb so much in the skin versus what a liquid foundation would do. That's just my my opinion on it. Cream concealer just really settles better, better for me under the eye versus on my my face you know what I'm saying and then when it comes to liquid conceal it just seems like it just I have to keep reapplying it they sent me their new collection I keep calling the concealer stick but they sent me their new collection of their skin magnet high coverage foundation stick so of course they said pick three colors now I picked three colors I picked my color that I normally wear from the she glam foundation collection which is a cashew that's the color that I wear okay this is called cashew and this is the color I wear in their liquid foundation. So I knew it was going to be good. And then the other two colors I picked as, you know, concealer under eye concealers. I got a golden and a butterscotch. And I do have that on today. Now, the one thing that they did send with it also was this brush called the Skin Magnet Foundation Brush. Now, this is what they say you can put it on with. I'm going to give my honest opinion about this brush. When I first seen it, when I took it out the packaging, I was like, oh, this is really different. This is really cute. But the more I tried to use it, the harder it just was. I just don't like, now I'm not really sure how the coverage is because I couldn't really continuously blend my makeup with this brush. There's no handle for this brush. So you're holding it in an awkward position, which makes it just impossible to do like a really good blend. There is no handle. So you're either cuffing it like this, which is like really, really awkward. I just couldn't, and when I wanted to hold it like such, it still was like, you know what? Let me just switch the brush to what I'm used to using, which has a handle. Now, some people might say, well, you can use it like a beauty blender because it's like the same. You probably could. And maybe that's the whole like idea of the short handle brush. I don't know. I'm going to try it out again. Um, I did have it on my face last week, this foundation. I did have the makeup on my face last week, okay, um, for my video, for my Real Talk. And I, I just didn't see, like, you know what? I have oily skin, for one. Let's just let's just put that out here. And, I, and that's another reason why I really don't like um, cream foundation for my face. I have oily skin, and it just seems like the cream foundation just sits on top of my oily skin, which it doesn't work out for me. It just, it's just like a whole bunch of oil. And then within a few hours, a couple hours, my skin then ate up that oily cream foundation and it just looking even more oily. I will say I do like the whole concept of their packaging. Really, really nice and chic. Um, on the bottom, you'll see the color. It also comes in one of these little velvety cases, which is cool if you like, like aesthetically pleasing stuff. I'm fine without the, the thing, you know, I don't even, What's the whole point of it? And I'm gonna just put a little bit because I don't really like to wear makeup if I'm not going anywhere. But I'm also going to try out this brush. I'm gonna pretend like it is a beauty blender. So I do notice 
Now, full coverage, did it say full coverage? High coverage, it didn't say full coverage. So what is the difference between high coverage and full coverage? Because high coverage, I would consider it to be um, full coverage, right? High coverage to me, not for me, high coverage, full coverage is something that covers my freckles. And for this particular foundation, I'm just not, it's just not doing it for me. So this is the foundation side and this is the non-foundation side. Not much of a difference, you know what I mean? Not too big of a difference. You know, you might see a little bit slighter tone and color. You know what I mean? I don't find this to be um, high coverage. And if that's what their version of full coverage is, I don't find this to be that. I definitely will use it under my eye for sure because it does give me a coverage that I'm good for. You know, that's good for me. If I'm if I'm not wearing a full face of makeup, but I still want to conceal under my eye, I don't want my concealer under my eye to be too thick and noticeable. You know what I'm saying? I like it for just that reason and that reason only, which is concealer. As far as full face, it's not like one of my favorites. And I'm not a big fan of the brush, but as a concealer, I definitely think it's perfect for a concealer. This foundation is definitely a perfect concealer. But other than that, let's just get into this real talk. Um, you already know the deal. If you have a real talk that you want me to talk about, meaning if it is love related, work related, I don't know, whatever you want to talk about, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail, or you can send it to April's Real Talk at gmail. Make sure to put in the subject line, Real Talk for either one. If you want to go ahead and change the people you names who you're talking about in this video or this email, go ahead and do so. Let me know if you didn't change them, if you want me to change them. Either way, you go ahead, send me a Real Talk email. I'll be more than happy to chit chat it up. So with that being said, let's just get into this Real Talk, okay? my greasy ass lips i had to put on some um carmax because girl i'll be getting dry lip got my girl i got my cuppy right here okay and also got my dunkin donuts on the side because you know it's once a week mondays is when i prefer prefer it i don't know why but it just is also you guys for those of you who um um didn't know i was doing a giveaway for rpg shows anniversary and my birthday which we share in common and i was just so not stoked but disappointed that the video took a couple of days to get like to a certain amount of views i'm not sure if it's because i released it on my birthday which is also the same day as real talk but girl i i need to get my views up okay like seriously my views for wig reviews really need to go up i think it has a lot to do with the saturation of wig reviews on here but i was really really disappointed at the amount of views that i got plus that wig was bomb as hell when i tell you the wig is bomb as hell the wig is bomb as hell um it definitely is staying in my collection but it's a bomb as hell wig so let's just get into the real talk, all right? You guys ready? So she titled this, Real Talk. I don't want to invite them. Okay, girl. Hey, Miss April, I have a serious question for you. My name is Diamond, and I am a mother of one daughter who's turning six in August, and I'm also married. So, Miss April, I'm planning this big theme tea party for my daughter. I'm from the South, and we love a good tea party. Now, you know, family always gets invited first, and they are first on the list of invites. And, of course, everyone will need to dress up in their best tea party outfits. So here is the thing. My husband has this one nephew who is nine. He insists on me inviting him. When I tell you this child is bad, he's bad. He's one of those I'm going to avoid kids because they're so bad. This boy does nothing but use profanity, slang, and more slang. He comes to the family barbecues, which we have about six of them during the summer months, and he just acts up. I'm always avoiding eye contact with him or a conversation because he just that annoying and bad. I don't want to invite him to my daughter's birthday party because of these reasons. I have seen him bully other family members who were younger than him. I keep telling my husband he's too old to invite because our daughter is turning six. This motherfucker is damn near 10 going on 25. I do have a limit of kids 
attending the party, which I set my limit at 20. My daughter has invited her dance friends who are also coming, and that is 12 of them who have already RSVP. Then there is my sister's daughter, whom is seven, and her son, whom is seven. She has twins, and then a couple of my friend's kids. That makes up 20 kids for the party. My husband keeps saying I can make room for 21. April, I have my floor plan already set up. I like the amount of tables I have for those attending, which is five kids per table, which equals four tables. Everyone is comfortable and the table looks amazing, set for five. I don't want to invite this kid. What would you do? Thank you, Diamond. Cheers to Diamond on that. Diamond is wondering, should she invite the kid or not? She ain't wondering. She says she don't want to. She's already made her floor plans for 20 kids. She got the tables, four tables, five kids per table. The table looks nice, set for five people, which is a great amount of people at a table. I think five is, is a good amount, okay? Then we have the age, the ages. Now she got her dance friends. She got 12, the young lady got 12 dance friends that have already RSVP, 20 kids for the whole party, including her daughter. So we got the dance kids, that's 12, plus her daughter is 13. Plus she got seven more rooms. So then she got her sister, two kids, which they twins, and they are seven years old. So that's 15. So then she got her friend's kids. That's five more kids added. And I'm pretty sure her friend's kids is somewhere in the age group of, you know, five, six, seven, eight, you know what I'm saying? Nine going on 10, 10 year old who going on 25 that's a little bit much okay like i don't really think that that kid should be invited either plus the profanity i don't understand why people think that their kids cursing and doing grown-up things is so cool these days like y'all put them on social media doing the most grown-up shit and y'all think it's cool and then get mad when somebody got something to say about it you know what i'm saying like the dressing the behavior the the dance demos or skits which are your little six-year-old all dressed up like a grown-up that'd be a little bit much like let a kid be a kid like kids cursing is not cute at all it should sometimes Sometimes even grown-ups cursing ain't cute and I just curse but it is what it is okay I'm just being me but here's the thing he bad and he be using profanity like straight up um I don't think he would be getting invited to any birthday parties but did she just say that he'd be at the barbecues they have six barbecues throughout the summer and did she just say that she tried to avoid eye contact with him how the fuck do you avoid eye contact with a nine-year-old like straight up like who does that not saying that's a bad thing but goddamn if you gotta try to avoid eye contact in a conversation with a nine-year-old because of their behavior then that says a lot about the parents of the nine-year-old like i'll be damned but you know something though i feel where she's coming from because i have avoided interaction with badass kids too like straight up i have avoided interaction with bad kids too because i feel like bad kids will get you in a zone where you just ready to put that bad kid in a motherfucking headlock like have you ever been around a badass kid and you just want to punch them in their belly like I, i'm not saying child abuse them okay but i'm just saying have you ever been around somebody else's kid or somebody's child or just a kid in general you could be an out and about in public and you see this kid just being real disrespectful this particular kid is just doing non-kid age shit like when i say non-kid kid age shit i mean they acting up they real bad they unruly they using slang their behavior and body language is bad like have you ever seen a kid like that in public and you just wanted to go up to that one kid and just sock them one time because they just really needed that like i have avoided being around kids like that i have seen kids like that i have been out in public and seen kids like are you really going to stand there and let your kid embarrass you like that kids you know what i'm saying like you be in a grocery store or Walmart, wherever. It's even been Target. I have seen kids, girl, I have seen this one kid in Target one time that just was so fucking unruly that I just wanted to go snatch up the kid. Like the kid was screaming and hollering. I guess the mother didn't give it like a toy or give him a toy that he wanted. Okay. Cause they was in Target and we was in that section. I don't know how it started, but that's what it seemed like it stemmed from. Girl, when I tell you he started crying, he had to be about like six years old. So you know he already knew better. Like, you know kids know better at a certain age. Like, you know better than doing that shit. I don't know about every kid, but I know mine's knew better. My kids motherfucking knew better. But this kid, he just was screaming in the aisle. And I could hear him from aisles away. Like, I was in the kids' clothing section. And I could hear him from, my, from, from like, aisles away. Like, goddamn, shut the F up. STFU. Will you tell that motherfucker the STFU? This is how I started feeling about the kid. And even my kid. I don't even know the kid. But when I start feeling that way about the kid, Kid, that means you're just doing too much because I could definitely tune a kid's cry out but the way he was going about it was just like yo let me where the fuck is he at 
let me just let me where the fuck is he at when i finally found the kid like not like i was looking for the motherfucker but i was walking past you know i had finished my shit in that particular aisle he still yo this shit was going on for like 10 minutes okay i didn't hear the mother saying nothing i didn't hear her tell him to shut up i hear him tell him be quiet none of that shit unless she was sitting there secretly pinching him and whispering in his ear i didn't hear shit by the way he was screaming i would have went off everybody in the store would have heard me okay when I went past, my mind you, like I said, he was already screaming for like about five, ten minutes. Okay, I lost track of time. All I know is I was irritated. I was so fucking irritated, I was ready to leave. And I like going to Target. But as I finished what I was doing in that one section, I walked past. Like, I didn't, I wasn't looking for him. I wasn't scouting the motherfucker, but I see him like stomping, doing all of this. Like, yo, if you were my kid, you wouldn't have no legs left. Like straight up, if you were to do that to me in public as one of my kids or my grandkids, you won't have no legs. OK, straight up. You would not have no legs left. Like, I don't understand how these kids these days could just do non kid shit like they will test your patience and to invite somebody's badass kid to a party function or just a function event in general that you done took your time to put together. And then for them to come there and ruin that shit. Girl, hell fucking no. His little ass wouldn't be invited neither. OK, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to stand your ground on this one, Diamond, and tell your husband no means no. And he's not invited. I already got my floor pans. It's 20 kids. He too old. And for one. I, I never I never foresee when it's a tea party isn't it's just a girl thing like I, I'm just wanting to know isn't a tea party only for females like that's what I always seen growing up but I mean this is a new era and it is a kids party so of course invite your sister because you can't invite your sister one kid and not the other it just wouldn't be fair you know what I'm saying sometimes kids don't understand shit but I definitely wouldn't invite no badass kids now your, your husband's gonna have to understand main thing is he's too old He's too old. And you know something, Diamond? If you haven't already told your husband the reason why, like she's telling her husband that she doesn't want to invite him because she's already got her floor plans, her floor plans, excuse me, and she doesn't want to ruin her floor plans. And he's saying, he's saying, you can always add 21. He probably wants the little boy to sit at the table with the birthday girl too. Listen, let me tell you something. Now they've been married or they've been together for a minute. Now she didn't say how long, but they got a six-year-old so we already know it's been seven years you know 10 months for pregnancy and six years old some people are gonna probably be in the comments like ten, you're not pregnant 10 months you're not pregnant 10 months yes the fuck you are there's four weeks in a month you're pregnant 40 weeks sometimes even 42 it's fucking 10 months some people don't realize that i was told that by the doctor anyway either here nor there they've been married long enough for her to be able to tell him your nephew is a rascal he is a little rascal. And I mean that in the nicest way. If you don't understand what I mean, baby, he's bad. He's disrespectful. You've seen him in action. You have seen him in action. Sometimes you have to speak like that. Because if you just come out right, well, that motherfucker bad as fuck. And I really don't care for him. I be trying to avoid eye contact and conversations with him. Don't tell your husband that. But just tell him he's a rascal and he don't know how to behave. It's not even just the age. It's his behavior, okay? Maybe he won't take so offense to it. Because obviously he really don't notice that shit if he's really wanting him to come. Or maybe he's wanting him to come because it's either his sister's kid or his brother's kid. Who knows how the little boy is related to your husband. But here's the thing. He bad, he's overage, and he needs to keep his 25-year-old acting ass at his own home, okay? I wouldn't invite him. Sometimes you have to put your foot down, Diamond. I'm not saying be disrespectful. But what I am saying is... So nobody want no baby kids around their kids. I don't know what about you, but kids will influence another kid to behave. Listen, I know this for a fact. My granddaughter goes to daycare. She too, she come home with all type of new different attitudes and behaviors. She be sassy one minute. Sometimes she's very dramatic, okay? Sometimes she picks up other kids' behavior. This is what they do. They, in, they are sponges and they pick up what other kids do. Now, who knows where this little nine-year-old picked up this behavior of profanity. But I don't know about y'all, but I would be very embarrassed, overly embarrassed if my kid was to be using any type of cuss word at a certain age. Did I, I think I told y'all one time before um, that my daughter Tati went um, trick-or-treating with my daughter-in-law and her husband, or her man, okay? You know, my son. She was going to just go with my daughter-in-law. This was when my granddaughter was mm, a little bit, almost one. She was almost one. Well, my son decided to go into work late that day because he wanted to join them in their trick-or-treating which made no sense, okay? But anyway, so at the time they had three kids. She wasn't pregnant or anything. And Julian was about, he's five now, so he had to be three. Um, they went to this house that always has like, you know, really great decorations. 
and the lady tried to give him some candy. I can't remember word for word, uh, but basically he told her, no bitch, I said no bitch. He didn't want the candy. He called her a bitch. My son thought it was funny, he laughed it off. My daughter, Tati, was so embarrassed. Like, I find that to be so disrespectful and embarrassing. Like, you don't think that your kid out in public that's little like that cursing is disgraceful? Like, it's disgraceful. And he tried to tell me one time about him cursing. And that was one of our issues before while we stopped speaking because he tried to cuss me out because I said something about my grandson using profanity and that it wasn't cute. So he tried to cuss me out about it. I think I stopped speaking to him at that time, maybe like six months. But um, I think it's it's just disgraceful. It's disgraceful. I don't think any kid in using profanity is cute at all. I don't think any kid acting non their age is cute at all. Like I don't think like dressing kids up in halter tops and things like that are is cute at all. I just don't. Let a kid be a fucking kid. You know what I'm saying? But like I was saying, a lot of people get really, really insulted and offended when you say or try to comment about, oh, you're, you're dressing your kid too grown or your kid is acting too grown or you're letting your kid do grown stuff or you're letting your kid see too much grown stuff or you're behaving very sexually in front of your kids. Like they don't like to see uh, comments about their behavior when it comes to the kids. But this is why these kids sometimes be fucked up and they be acting too grown because they be doing too much grown shit in front of their kids' parents. Um, but having a grown kid is that's only like 10 years old is acting 25 is not a flex. It's definitely not a flex. And kids cr cursing is not a flex. I wouldn't invite him to the party. I'm sorry. And if his parent, if you're seeing, if Diamond is seeing this kid cursing, I'm pretty sure his parents got to be seeing him curse. Come on, man. Like, what is he only letting it out for around Diamond? No, I'm pretty sure he just does that in general. God knows what else she sees regarding this kid, but I wouldn't invite him. And I don't think you have to bend over backwards and or any type of way just to appease anyone else if you already have your plans for this party and you've already stated how many people you want to come to the party and you already have your age requirements kind of like set too i don't think you need to appease anybody for inviting this young man you need to let your husband know there are four plans that have already been done for this party and for two he's his age requirements are he's almost 10 she's saying he's damn near 10 so he's a little bit too old for the party six-year-olds and 10-year-olds don't really do the same thing she's just turning six so meaning she just met that six-year-old mark she ain't been six and turning seven she's just turning six so six-year-olds and 10-year-olds sometimes they don't really have a lot in common especially if their behavior is totally different i really don't think that you need to bend over backwards and say hey yeah let's invite him tell your husband your true reasons why you already have floor plans his behavior and all also, his age is not the same. So you have three reasons why you don't want to invite him, okay? And I would definitely say that. Maybe your husband does see this and he's just trying to appease somebody in his family. Either way, stand your ground, girl. You don't have to be rude and disrespectful about it, but you've already made your decision on the party. And sometimes you just have to say no. No means no sometimes. Sometimes we just have to stand our ground. That's my opinion, okay? I just don't like bad kids. Baby kids do not get no type of invitation over here. OK, I just can't tolerate badass kids. I wasn't like that. I didn't raise my kids to be that way. And I damn sure don't allow my grandkids to be like that. So I wouldn't invite somebody else's kids. That's just an irritation that I just don't need. Period. Y'all let her know what y'all would do in the comments. So moving on to the next real talk. Let's get into it. Why does my finger feel like it's slowing up? OK, real talk. My lifelong journey. Now, I don't know what a lifelong journey is, but we're going to find out today. OK. Hi, April. Thank you for reading my email. You can call me Colby. It's my favorite cheese. Okay, you know what? That's funny. Uh, I like Colby Jack, uh, Colby cheese too. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite cheese, but I love cheeses. I don't, I love cheese. I love cheese. I can have cheese on basically, well, not everything, but cheese is good. I love cheese. So here goes. I have been married to the same man for 15 years now. Mind you, my age is 38. So yeah, since I was 23 and 23, but been with him technically since I was 20. We met in college. April, we have no kids together, thank God, because that would make the situation worse probably. I have never thought I would feel miserable in my marriage. Have you ever been bored by a person my husband doesn't do anything spontaneous. He's not romantic. He's not engaging. He's not adventurous. None of it. He's so planned. Everything is planned. I need some excitement in my life, April. Not saying I want to jump out of airplanes or run across the country, but damn, I need some type of excitement. I've tried to suggest we do things like go travel. Since we are childless, we should really get out and do things. All he wants to do is sit in the house, watch sports, or TV shows and pay bills. I really feel like it's time for a change for me. I need more, I want more, and my husband is just not doing it for me. 
We used to go out and do dates, go out of town, visit other states. He loves to cook, so he watches a lot of those cooking shows too. My husband may be thinking that his cooking is going to get me to stay, which is what he says. Whenever I get upset about not going out or such, he cooks me something unique to tie things over between us. I appreciate his effort, but I want more than a hot meal. I don't want to give up, but April, I damn sure don't want to be miserable either. Thank you, Colby. Okay, so listen, I told y'all before I'd be trying to mind my goddamn business. I try to mind my business. I'll be trying to get in y'all marriages and y'all affairs because for one, I ain't married. So some people might think that I'm hating or I'm not dating anybody. They might think I'm hating because I'm single. No, bitch. No, not at all. I am not hating, not jealous. I'm loving my life. Girl, when I tell you I love being single, I love motherfucking being single. Don't get it twisted. Now, I do be getting motherfuckers trying to holler and I might take your number, but then I will ghost you or just, I told you, you got to come through with a lot of shit before I even give you the time of day. Like, don't come to me with no bullshit, okay? I don't need your money, but you need, I need a lot more than, I just need a lot before I even get into a relationship or to the dating scene with certain men. I've been with, look, Listen, I've been doing that. But I just be trying to mind my fucking business, okay? Now, this is what I, I, I like to do. Now, Kobe, Kobe been in with Kobe been with her man for since she was 20. So 18 years. Okay, they ain't got no kids together. Um, her favorite thing is cheese. You know what I'm saying? She said that her husband do everything planned. He's not spontaneous or any of that. He loves to cook. Now, listen, let me tell you something. There sometimes you need one person to balance the whole relationship because if there's two of y'all that's spontaneous and just want to go on the women things it's not going to work out it's not going to last it might it just might be a lot of complications so sometimes we do need to have one of the people in the relationship to be a very balanced just so that way things get met um criteria gets done whatever now he does like to pay bills who don't like a motherfucker to pay bills because your ass don't want to be homeless without lights no food and going hungry okay that's just my thing there's nothing wrong with being a planned out person i per se am a planned out person y'all know i don't do a lot of i don't do a lot of spontaneous shit there's things that i just ain't about to do okay you're not gonna come to me at the last minute and be like let's go out girl sometimes that might fly depending on where it is if we go into the same spot we always go to have a couple drinks and watch sports then i'm cool with that we could do that but if you want me to go like out of town or something like that bitch i'm not about to just up and go i need to have shit planned i need to make sure that I have yeah that's me i'm a very planned person i'm not a spontaneous person because sometimes comes spontaneous comes with some repercussions that i just don't really want to fucking deal with but it is cool to be spontaneous sometimes you know sometimes we do have to be a little spontaneous um it all depends on what that means okay like she says that he um what did she say he's not romantic he's not engaging he's not adventurous none of it now here's the thing honey is he not romantic or are you both not romantic because sometimes you just can't wait around for him to be romantic sometimes you gotta lead in certain in, in certain avenues it don't hurt to be romantic to him okay y'all are married y'all been married uh, been together for 18 years okay so he's not spontaneous what do you mean by that do you mean in the bedroom and on daily life what do you mean okay sometimes you have to show him because he might feel like what he's doing makes you satisfied and makes you happy now i have an idea that might just be something that you like now you say that you guys used to go out of town y'all used to go and visit other states y'all used to go on date but you also said he likes to cook and he cooks real good and he also likes to cook uh watch cooking shows here's an idea for you this might just work a kind of like mind tricking him okay you want to go out, you want to go visit other states, you want to go on trips, right? How about you go to him and say, hey, let's go to, I'm just going to throw in a state, I don't know. Let's go to Maryland because I hear they have really good crab restaurants there, okay? I hear they have really good seafood boil restaurants there. Let's go and do a road trip and try out different type of food diners. You know what I'm saying? Like something like that. Since he likes to cook and since he likes to watch these shows, why don't you use that as a way to get what you want but also giving him what he wants you know what i'm saying i think i because look girl i like to eat i love i like to, i like food i like trying out different places so going out of state and trying somewhere different might be the way to get him to move off his ass and be like yeah let's do this if he likes to cook and he feels like there's something really in it for him like a food trip girl that might be your way of getting him to go somewhere how about you know, you want to go to Paris. I'm not saying go to Paris, but I'm just using these places as just, you know, an example. Hey, babe, I hear they have really good cre crepes, crepes, I think that's how you say it, in Paris. And you love crepes. You love cooking. Let's go to Paris and try out their crepes from like different places. You get a trip, you get some adventure, and he gets some foodie. Togo. I'm just saying. It's a way, you got you to gotta work in it. You can't expect the one person to 
to satisfy all your needs. You guys got to work together. And when you see a person lacking in one thing, then you got to pick it up and you got to you got to pick up that slack. But sometimes you also got to remind them. Sometimes you also got to show them. Sometimes men just don't have that romantic ability. Sometimes women just don't have that romantic ability. If he's not being romantic to you, maybe he sees that you're satisfied. Y'all been together for so long. So what do you do in return? You show him the romance. So then once he sees what you like, only because you're giving that to him and he sees how it makes you feel, then he may just reciprocate and do it for you. Understand what I'm saying? So what I mean by that is, oh, he ain't being romantic. He's not um, like doing dates or whatever, or he's not being romantic in the bed or whatever. You do it to him. And once he sees how it makes you feel, then he's going to reciprocate. Hopefully he should. That's the whole point. Okay. So sometimes you have to show them. Okay, whether it be man or woman, sometimes you have to show the person, this is what you do in a relationship. This is what makes me happy. This is what gets me going, okay? If you giving me food to eat, yeah, food is definitely going to get me going. It's nice that he tries to overcome the situation by cooking you a hot meal, because some motherfuckers won't even do that. But also, we have to realize sometimes that we have to put in a little extra work sometimes just to make ourselves feel satisfied and also to show that one person, this is what you need to do to make me happy. This is what you need to do to get the juices flowing. If you're just not showing him, then what do they expect? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes, like I said, he might feel like you are happy and you are satisfied because this is what you're doing. You guys are a childless couple, so it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, because we don't have children, we got to go travel all the time. He might just be concerned about the future. Maybe that's the reason why I pay the bills there's nothing wrong with paying bills girl like i just said if you don't pay the bills you might be homeless you might be electricity less you might be internet less you might be food less you might be a whole things less okay so we can't get on them about paying bills because sometimes people complain about shit that just don't need to be complained about like y'all will complain about him paying bills all the time then on the other hand y'all pay complain about him not paying the bills like y'all you can't win for lose sometimes with some people you know what i'm saying and that'd be that like you complain about her doing this all the time but then when she do it then you make another complaint about like Oh my fucking goodness. What is it? Okay. She's like, she don't want to give up, but she don't want to be miserable either. Is he making you that motherfucking miserable that you just can't find the time within yourself to help him succeed in a marriage? Have you ever spoke to him about it? You saying that you just get upset and he'll cook you a meal. So if you getting upset about the issues of not going out, then girl, listen, put some kind of keyword in there to allow him to see, oh, well, if we go out here, oh, if we go out here, I also get something in it. Even if it's a new place in town, it could be where you live at, babe. I heard they got a new seafood boil um, 30 minutes away. I know you love a good seafood boil. Let's go try it out. And you could see, be the critic on it. Girl, he might definitely be down with it. You gotta put some keywords out there for sometimes for people to realize like, oh, okay, all right, if we go do this, then I'm gonna benefit from this. I do love to cook. Yeah, let's go check out that new spot. Let's not, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we gotta help them think. It don't just necessarily have to be a man, but it could be a woman too. Don't give up, girl. Don't feel miserable. Don't move on. Because sometimes a good man is hard to find. And I'm not sure, but you're just saying your husband is not doing it for you. Well, listen, have you ever thought that maybe you ain't doing it for him either? And that's the reason why he don't want to go nowhere or he don't want to do things. Okay, straight facts. Like maybe if you do something and put a little effort in, then maybe he'll put some more effort in and maybe y'all both will be enough for one another. That's all I can tell you. I try to mind my motherfucking business when it comes to anybody's relationship and marriage. You know what I'm saying? But I really don't see... The, the elements in where you know he's making you that miserable he likes to sit in the house thank god he's not one of those motherfuckers that leave the house and you can't find him you know what i'm saying thank goodness he comes home because sometimes like being in a marriage your motherfucker man won't come home and you be like where were you at oh i fell asleep on my aunt's couch like some dumb shit like that like on some real shit you know what i'm saying so be happy that he's there y'all kind of be complaining a little bit too much he pays bills he watches sports he cooks god damn what do you want the man to do He's not adventurous enough. Like, listen, cut the man some slack, help him work on that, and then take it from there. Don't be so quick to give up. 20 years with a person is a long time. Is it 20 years? 18, excuse me. 18 years with a person is a long time. And I wouldn't say give it up because shit, the next person you meet might be don't know how to cook, don't want to cook, don't want to pay for shit, ain't even got a motherfucking job. And talk about adventure. His adventure is going to the liquor store and that's that. 
and, and staying in the house, that's because the nigga don't got no job and he just like to sit on the couch and play video games all the time. I don't know, but just stick with your husband, try to work it out and try to give him keywords and pointers to where he knows what you like. And then that way he can reciprocate and do it for you and try to put in keywords there about going out of town and trying out new adventures and trying out new restaurants, things that he likes too. So that way you both get a win-win out of the situation. I don't fucking know, but don't give up and don't complain. Kobe, you like cheese so much. Why don't you set out some cheese platters? What do you call those little um, things? Uh, what are those things called when you have a platter? Oh man, I hate when I forget something and it's like a, 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 a what are those? Oh, I can never say the name properly, but it's a, a cure board or whatever you call it. You got little, different little, you know, desserts on there, or cheeses and crackers and fruits. Make him something like that. You know what I'm saying? Try something different with him. The same shit you give to him, he's going to give you in return. I guarantee you. On that note, you guys, let Kobe know what you would do in a situation. I damn sure wouldn't give up. You didn't complain about him like anything negative. The, the complaints weren't really negative to me. They were just your wants and your needs. But they were suggest these what i gave you was suggestions now what you do from here on out kobe is on you i don't know but just figure it the fuck out okay i just wouldn't give up just that quick i don't know you guys but on that note i'm gonna go i'm so hungry i'm always hungry when i do real talk like i'm starving i'm going to figure out what i'm going to go downstairs and eat and that's that i love y'all leave your comments down below stay deep and devolicious make sure you rate comment subscribe thumbs the video up check out my other videos help me get my views up i love y'all stay blessed and i'll see y'all in the next one